Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another small vehicle that's both fun to drive around and has a very unique look that could be a bit of fun to mess around with in survival mode, transporting goods from one place to another on this magnetic plate section that I'm currently standing on top of. So this thing is called the Cargo Rickshaw, which is well this very rusted and very rundown looking vehicle to do exactly what I just said. So move my character off the thing so we get a better look at what's going on. There we are. And yes, all the way up to here, we've got four magnetic plates, but we're going to drop down a medium cargo container, or well, anything else that can fit on the platform, transport it to where it needs to go, then unload it with maybe a crane system, or a small air vehicle, which is drop down and pick it up. And of course, we drive around, we've got this section right at the very back. We've got a bunch of windows that curve forwards, and then of course our helm to actually control it, and it is quite odd having a vehicle set up with this, especially because it's only got one wheel at the very front. It can be quite wonky, very easy to tip over, so you have to be quite careful when transporting goods. But anyway, put my character, or putting the camera, like so, pressing F10, finding the sport menu, the cargo rickshaw is 178 small blocks using a couple of the DLC packs. We see no information whatsoever up here, other than the very fancy thumbnail. I'm just going to give this a thumbs up, we run towards the very front, have a quick look around the outside, then we'll go through the controls, drive around for a bit, and then I'll put a nice heavy cargo tin in the middle and see how that changes it. So at the very front, this is what we get. Oh, that's the wrong way. Off he goes. And yes, what we got is a spotlight, a rusted spotlight to love the darkness with a yellow neon tube in the front of it. Yellow neon tubes are a very common theme around this thing, adding both the railings and of course a bit of decoration here and there. Down below here is like a small mudguard like section made out of this bluish greeny steel box, once again rusted up. Then down below there is your single wheel to well drive it around. Take a better look at that when we go underneath it, we're moving up and on the side, there's the wheel suspension, around here is where the yellow neon tubes come all the way up and onto some rusted yellow steel blocks, they then connect up to the main platform on the side where we see a bunch of beam blocks, we see a truss block, two transparent LCD screens or even the projected LCD screens with a warning sign, a blinking yellow light on this side, one skin small yellow neon tubes adding as the railing, then towards the back here, here's your other wheel with once again the armor panels adding as a mud guards, then all the way up to here this is the main body or what's going to be shielding you as you're sitting in the cockpit. Moving up slightly more, there's the windows, and there's some very, very rusted armoured panels to make up the side section, and of course the roof. Round towards the very back. There we are, so we don't exactly have a hop up to get inside here, so you may have to use a jetpack if you're on a high gravity planet, but anyway, there's your connector at the back to dock it up, and of course to recharge it. All the way up here is where you're going to be standing, right in front of that helm, and all the way up to there is an LCD screen, a transparent LCD screen displaying a logo. Next to it is a window, and well, that's all we're going to be able to see when we drive it around. Come on to the opposite side, zooming away. There we are. And moving all the way up and looking down, we'll start at the very front here. And well, there we are, the yellow neon tubes around that front wheel. Onto the main body, there's your four magnetic plates to clamp whatever goods you want to have transported down. There's a handy little sign saying storage area, so just in case you get confused what the section is meant to be for, well, there you are. Then we can see some more rusted arm panels to go around. Nice little pattern, nice rectangular pattern. On the top and the bottom, we've got some barred windows, which go next to our yellow neon tubes. Then turning around onto this section, onto the very front. There we've got a sound block, but we do have control over it in the helm to act as your horn, make sure people can get out of the way as you're driving this thing around. Then all the way up, looking down at the cabin part at the back. There we're the top of the logo, and then your window. Moving all the way down underneath it. So we're going to start, in fact, we'll just look at it as a whole. There we go. So yes, we've got batteries, giving a nice bit of power, turning on my light, so I'm going to make any difference whatsoever. And now we see our wheel suspensions at the back, forming the connector, how everything's been connected up to the very middle, and how it comes all the way across to the very front, we see your wheel suspension, and how that wheel's been housed up in those armoured panels. And with that, that's a brief look around the outside of the cargo rickshaw, and well, for what it is, looks fantastic with how it's been set up, and it should be a lot of fun to use in spa mode if you do want to have something more roleplayish to transport goods from one place to another, rather than just loading up onto a giant ship, onto a giant land vehicle, and just transporting it that way. But now what we're going to do now is grab hold my character, we're going to come all the way around, towards the very back here, and we're going to hop up, there we go, perfectly jumped inside, and well, this is what we get when we go into the helm. Looking around here, we actually got a fantastic view all the way around this thing, of course our back is going to be a little bit exposed, but that should not matter because this vehicle should not be in the combat zone. It should be around your base, just moving stuff from one place to another, like say from warehouse to warehouse, or from your main base to like a nearby warehouse. And we bring out the HUD, these are the controls we get. So we've got number one, which for your parking brakes, so you do not need to press P, just in case you do have say a trailer connected up by that connector at the back of the vehicle. 
with your number two for your horn. So we're zooming all the way in. There we go. We can now just press it, tell people to get out of the way. So we're transporting the goods wherever they need to go. We then got number three for your transparent LCD screens. Turn them on and off. Then you've got connected back to lock and unlock it. Your batteries to auto and recharge. Seven and eight is then for your wheels, but we do not need to touch them. And then finally, a very important one, your magnetic plates are the ones at the front here to lock down your cargo. On tab number two, we've got more control for your wheels. But once again, we don't need to touch any of them. It's all perfectly fine with how it's been set up by default. Then checking all the other tabs. We've got nothing else. So here we go, driving around while empty. So undoing that. Oh, in fact, that was turned off. That explains why I was wobbling around earlier. But here we go. We're not going to be going anywhere anytime soon. And turning around is very... Very odd compared to traditional vehicles to showcase on this channel is, well, it just feels like it's going to tip over whenever you press A or D on the keyboard or when you move left and right. So you've got to be very careful, maybe turn it around about 5 meters per second, make sure you don't accidentally tip over because you do have top heavy cargo. Now we're going to hop out of this and actually put down the medium cargo container. So here we go, I added this to my hotbar earlier. So just dropping that down there, that'll do quite nicely. And then we're going to come all the way up to it and load it up with a bunch of cobalt. So into here, cobalt all. I'm now just going to go 99999. Spawn it in container. There we go, the vehicle just pulls all the way down because that's one hell of a lot of weight inside there now. And here we go, one more time. So getting to the helm, moving forwards, here we are. <laughs> well, it's a bloody stark difference compared to what we just had. This thing is incredibly slow with a car container full of cobalt all. And we're not even going to be able to get up to 10 meters per second in a reasonable amount of time. But once again, it does not matter because it should be around your base, just moving itself a very short distance. But of course, due to how heavy the cargo is, as you can see here, the wheels are actually scraping up against those armored panels. So we need to come over to tab number two and increase the power of the wheels just a little bit. That should be quite nicely. Now we just drive around one more time. And there we are. Let's just stop any old issues that happen when we start to move this thing around. But as for that, that's pretty much it for the cargo rickshaw. And all it has to offer. It's just a fun little thing to roleplay with in survival mode if you want to have something very different to use to transport goods from one place to another. So I can just go transport it to the base in the distance. I'm not sure what actual faction that is, but nonetheless, we're going to go all the way up to it. How about that be the end of this video? As I was saying, it's just a fantastic thing to drive stuff around. You can put any old thing you want on the front there. In fact, you could even strap on some chairs and have multiple people come on with you to well show people around your base. Of course, you can stack up multiple cargo containers on this if you want to do that. Just put some magnetic plates on top of that medium cargo container, put another one on top. And I suppose if you really want to, you put a very, very small ship and we'll just dock it on there and move it where it needs to go. And of course, now that I think about it, you could use this to transport parts of a vehicle. So say maybe your ship got shot up by a drone and say the thruster fell off it. You just put it on this and move it over to say a mechanic bay, get it all repaired up then transport it back. What you do with this vehicle is entirely up to you but it's just a fancy little thing to have, and just highly recommend downloading it, checking it out yourself. So while we're heading across there, what I might do is increase the speed limits. Let's find the wheels. Speed limits. There we go. Give it a bit more power, a bit more strength. And then away we go. Hopefully we can get up to a bit more speeds. There we are. We're now going above what we just had. Actually speed it up greatly. So here we go. We're going 20. We're getting a bit wobbly there. The three wheels... I'm not going to be too stable at high speeds. 30. Turning it slightly if I can. Oh god, we're starting to tip over there. 40. Now I'm just going to check that off. In fact, that's not even going to come off the magnet place. It's too heavy. So I can't give that base their cargo. We can see it's wobbling around there. So it is getting a bit violent. And then we go about 50 meters per second where things start to go horribly wrong. In fact, the wheels are wobbling quite oddly there. And that engineer is very composed as it gets flung around there. But no, that'll do for this video, and that'll do for this vehicle. As for that silly bit at the end, that's pretty much it for this vehicle. All it has to offer, what you can do with it, and what you can potentially do with it in your world. So if you want to download it, there'll be a link to it in the description below. I highly recommend checking it out yourself. I'll be back with another video sometime soon. Bye bye.